Hey you, hope everyone's doing well. <laughs> so on this video, pros and cons of high premium gold. I'm going to be going over just that. So if you like what you hear slash see and you haven't done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe. So I've got another video out this week. Um, hope everyone's doing well and fine and sticking to quarantines or out rebellion as they do. But, you know, just going over a few bits and bobs. A lot of the dealers now somewhat getting back into shipping some metals. Just been going over some of my high premium stack and, you know, looking at it and just considering or thinking whether some of them or some of these bits would have been better off as straight bullion. So when I'm doing a pros and cons, it's really going to be that. I don't think there is a con to owning gold, especially high premium, and even unless you paid over over the odds for it but just giving over my own personal pros and cons would love to know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments if you believe there are any cons to owning it so hopefully i'll try to touch upon all subjects but you know one of the first things that could come up when you're talking about high premium gold when i say high premium gold i'm going to be referring to modern pieces as usual sticking within my own comfort zone what i know what i've experienced firsthand is going to be gold that you're paying a lot more of a premium for over a standard bullion coin for instance where if it's spot price a thousand pound or a thousand dollars you can be picking that coin up for anywhere from 1100 you know 1200 tops whereas when you're talking high premium it could be greatly over that you could be looking anywhere from 1600 1500 pick your dollars or pounds any denomination you want so that's when you're more talking high premium then it gets down to how i mainly view high premium and like see myself paying the premium and can justify it even though it's never really justifiable is when it comes in the proof format because then you have a coin that's actually had more work in terms of producing the coin done to it that's how i view um high premium and uh, you know you're going to be paying a premium for that just from it being on a proof finish for those that don't know proofs when it gets the extra groundwork done we'll go over it another time information's out there but you know you get high premium coins like these for instance these rewinding coins that ain't proof but they still command a, a crazy high premium and a lot of um high premium coins don't necessarily come in proof i i, I think it's a bit of a cop out from the producers when they do stuff like that because you know you're paying that premium why not give it that extra special touch to it you know give it that proof finish um i normally don't handle the coins like this why well, i don't handle the proof ones i'm not too keen on handling the proof ones um even with gloves most times but you know it's all about what um high premium gold coin to actually go for you know it's, it's a minefield out there when you're talking high premium already it's no different than any collector piece that you're looking for it's going to be a hard job finding the right piece because you don't want to be buying something that's going to absolutely tank you know so just picking the first piece could be hard enough and you know if i've had many a question it's always been what i thought about this specific gold coin and a lot of the times yes it's high premium yes it's proof but i i think it's got a terrible history ahead of it so it, it's really looking at pieces and finding that could be one of the the biggest um cons and that's going to be regardless of what metal you're talking about it's just picking right but it can be more of a danger with gold because you're, you're paying a lot more coming in but once again depends i've seen silver price that silly numbers because you know when it comes time to sell it needs to be sold to another collector like yourself to to make any type of premiums back or for it to be justified as a, a, a collector coin and if you're going to be stuck in the mud doing that and have to resort to looking at a dealer they're going to offer you spot price and that's terrible when a dealer's offering you that if the dealer's not cut for you could have a dealer that is selling the exact same coin for a large premium so if they're offering you spot price then you know they're just being extremely cutthroat but sometimes you can just pick wrong you know it can be a collector coin for the moment and that's what a lot of these coins are coins for the moment coins that come out i could think of many franchise coins don't want to throw no coins under the bus here and at the moment they're hot and you know they're hot at, at that moment i don't know a coin a, a film may be out under that franchise or you know it, it's just the topic at the time and then the wind blows over and you're left with you know a gold coin that you paid a large premium for that you're now struggling with and that, that could be a bad pick also so picking right is always going to be an issue when you're talking high premium so that's one of the biggest pros but um cons should i say but i think it, it really stops there because from there it really breaks down to what i'm keen and not so keen on and, and touching back upon this when you're talking high premium i like personally prefer coins that don't come under this type of 
category. So we're looking at something that's, you get it all the time and they're just changing the date, for instance, and the libs. Why I say that, and it became one of my biggest cons because I can look at a piece like this, even though I purchased this at a fantastic time and, and spot price was fantastic, so it was a great buy. And I can look at it and basically say, would I prefer, I don't know what, this cost a set, this is from this set, not just a single coin. But you know, I could have technically had two ounces of gold, two and a one tenth coin, for instance, at the time, or even when I could have sold this and it could have liquidated pretty fast. Would it be better in straight raw gold bullion as a foundation? That's going to be one of the biggest cons on certain pieces. And, and for me, I look back at some of these pieces, regret wise, regret wise and it's the pieces that technically come out every year it's just been made proof you can get them in bullion if you want if you like the design that much you know unless you're really craving that proof finish and um i don't really see them shooting up in price unless you get one of those rare years you know where the mint makes a boo-boo or something catastrophic happens pandemic year and you know it's an in-demand piece but i think as time moves by um, that becomes shorter and shorter. I think something with the Libertad, there's always going to be a large audience for them. So luckily enough, but you know, you can get these identical in BU, you know, you just get them the variant change in the finish and then on the mintage. So I'm happy I own this, you know, no rush, no to sell, but I wouldn't be getting back into something like that. And same goes here. This was more of an excess purchase. One I done a long time ago, so that really is what it is. But these are the cons when I look at some more of the collector pieces that I look at like that. And next thing you could look at is say, you know, are they overpriced? You know, because it's oversaturated, especially for a lot of the modern collector pieces. Yes, you know, um, are some of them worth it? You know, now, when you look at a lot of the pieces, there's a new mintage out there, and that's the hundred plus. So you know, you could be looking at a, a, a in demand coin down there with a mintage of 100 and it's the raw mint that are really leading the way with that one of the bigger mints bringing out um, you know some good pieces from a very strong pedigree mint and they've got tiny mintages uh with that model and change coming from a big government i would say no they're not necessarily overpriced especially when you're talking base metal and being gold i think for the demand and for the new mintage models out there the price is about right you know, I think, I believe a one ounce coin is going for around on a lot of their proof new coins sell for damn near £2,000. So that's anywhere from $2,300. It's not double what a standard went up, nowhere near the mintage or the spot price lower. But I don't think they are overpriced. I do think they are oversaturated. I do think they're coming thick and fast, hard. But overpriced, no, believe it or not. And I've always said I believe gold to be cheap at the moment we're going to see how that really works out in the coming days months or years but i think it's so underpriced so i think a lot of these pieces you'll be able to claw some back i think the mints are also tactically pushing prices up seeing and recognizing this also but that's coming more so from demand and how their artificial sellout on the mint web page is really driving their little price increases but i don't believe they are overpriced i personally haven't purchased a piece and thought it was overpriced i pulled out some coins because i thought the prices were gouged up way too fast and that was on these rwandan pieces we did find it normalized but then we also saw demand drop off a little because of the antics that the mints were playing but i don't think they're overpriced will prices tank um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that mention even a coin like this, for instance, when it first came out, they wasn't able to purchase it. But, you, you know, they played the patient game, was able to go and pick the piece up at a fraction of the price at a later date. And there's always guys in the comments, shout to MM Meteor Man, I believe it is, that's mentioning that he's always able to pick up coins that he's been after for a long time. And I'll say, look, as, as in or as hot as a coin is, you're always going to have a situation, for instance, where somebody may have inherited the coins. And the person that's inherited those pieces may not be into them as the person that gave them the pieces, may not want them like the person gave them the pieces. So you're always going to find it could be the most hottest coin in the universe. You could be that day, 15, 20 years from now, down in your local coin shop or a pawn shop and come across this coin at spot, depending on what the spot price is then. Or even an absolutely blazing hot piece. So you're always going to find a hot piece at a great deal. Someone on the planet is always going to be the case. But some pieces hold their value better than others some pieces are sold at time of issue uh way overpriced you know they they got 
cocky with the price because they knew the demand was there when a lot of these pieces were released and you know they came down in price i've purchased this damn near issue price even though no not issue because spot was a lot cheaper but just made a comparison now it's somewhere around there so i think it's all about the initial price that the mint sell them at and then where spot price will land in the months to come from purchase but you're always going to find deals out there from a on in demand hot coin wherever you find that in mass is a different question i believe in some pieces that's not going to be the case so it's a definite pro you don't need to worry about finding it in the bargain bin at a later date but saying now i'll say this you are going to find like 90 percent of a lot of the coins that come from private mints in the bargain bucket at damn near spot and that'll be the next one i'll jump on to what is a better pick is a government coin a better option or a private mint you know you're looking at private mint coins right here that have done fantastic things and it's not the only coins let me know in the comments some other coins from private mints i think some private mints are, are riding the current wave but i don't think they're going to be able to stand the test of time and that's the case for a lot of the coins i've put them out there before as to why i don't stack them you know i've been asked about the scott Stell mint coins i put them in that category i've been asked about the germania mint coins i put them in that category i've been asked about the comsco mint coins these are all technically private mint i'm not sure if one of them in my mention are governments but i just think they're uh, uh, more themed for the current time and some of them are brand new you know they've just been producing coins for the past five plus years i barely even that and i don't think they're going to stand the test of time but then you can have coins that were originally designated to be bullion coins just fancy new themed bullion coins that are now you know are, are technically cementing their place in history for going on to be fantastic coins looking at the current times of the lion even on the Roman bullion site and the griffin are going on to be massive coins so anything can really go on to be a great coin but i feel if you're going to find a coin in a bargain bin at a later date it could easily be something like this because the person would have purchased it at damn near um bullion raw bullion prices so these are the types of coins that go on to be crazy in demand but i think it only works out for the crowd that are in that series at the time so for the next 10 years for instance this coin can be blazing hot and then after that or even less you can find this coin in your local lcs or pawn shop going for the current spot price or the same price as the standard gold eagle maple or britannia because it was purchased at that and so the person you know it, it takes the crowd that are into it to really keep the hype going and really keep it up if you understand what i'm saying but who knows whereas something like this is sold as a collector piece and is known as a collector piece it comes out in the proof variant and it's part of their long-running high premium collector coin series so it's interesting when you find certain hot designs we're in the whole britannia range you know with design changing every year so that's a definite pro there but ultimately i would say the, the the pros far outweigh the cons you know as long as you're not going crazy i've seen stacks and i've nearly got there myself where you know the bulk of their total ounces is, is a different you know themed collector piece i would say as long as you're aware that come time to sell there's nothing wrong and it adds flavor you know if you look at the array i've got here it gives flavor when you can look at your stack and you can see a whole leap of different kind of pieces as opposed to just one straight britannia gold maple but you're, you're sticking to the script when you do that but we all get bored and you know who said saving has to be boring well you know we all stick to the script but it can get boring should i say but you know who says stacking has to be boring so it's good when you can take a look at your stack and see a good variety of pieces like this but you know is it good or wise to have the bulk of your stack in mixed mints and stuff like this well it's all down to you you know everything i've purchased here i'm more than willing to or, or know that there's a possibility that come time to sell i'll be receiving spot price plus you know two percent or something like that there was a time where it was best time to liquidate these coins but uh, for me i picked up a lot of these in multiples so i did take absolute advantage then so having some in the stack now going on to see how well they do at a later date not to forget this is a 12 year series i did opt out have jumped back in because prices have normalized we'll see how that keeps on going um you know some i, I want to ride out and see how it goes but you know i'm looking at certain series i'm thinking at the end of the 12 years will it be as powerful as it was when it first started just taking a note from the perf mint lunar series so some i'm looking at and thinking should i just stick with the hot designs or you know keep it moving and try and see what i can work out from there but these are the pros and cons ultimately it's first of all 
finding the right coin is going to be the ultimate con you know that's 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 a hard job for anything you know ones i'm not too keen on would be a massive con are going to be from the guys that just don't rotate their designs i think that's a con for me because i think nowadays it's better off just having it in raw bullion the majority of the times you can get it in standard bullion anyway i don't believe they're overpriced so i definitely think that's a pro and it's, you're, you're buying something that is not the standard bullion variant especially when it comes in the proof format Will they tank in price? Anything can tank in price, but will they hold up? Who knows? You know, I think gold's gained for magical things in terms of doubling in price. Definitely within the next 18 months, so we'll have to see how that one plays out. And, you know, should a large portion of your stack be high premium? If that's what you like, and as long as you understand and don't have that belief where you think because you bought that dolphin coin and that triangle coin and that you know chi Wu coin and that dragon phoenix coin and you know absolutely nothing wrong with these pieces and they add absolute flavor to your stack just like a recipe you know it adds flavor and it's fantastic to look at when you can look at your stack and you see so many different variants of it i don't think there's a danger because it's gold i think anybody that has that luxury to be able to stack that type of way also knows and it's an absolute tiny loss when you calculate it to uh, you know owning a car or buying a brand new TV, these things get thrown into the, the skip. You know these things stick around forever, and you may need to shave off the premium you paid. It does add up, but ultimately, if you look at your life from now until you know you became aware, or should I say from the beginning until you became aware of how much you've lost there, it's nothing in comparison to having an absolute diverse you know flavorful stack but those are my pros and cons let me know your pros and cons down below in the comments to owning gold high premium bullion or do you think it should be strictly bullion and keep it as close to spot as possible so go ahead and leave your thoughts down below in the comments go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll catch you guys on the rebound